Pennsylvania. How are you guys doing? Okay. So how does a little kid born in Brazil to Chinese parents, three brothers, start a crazy Mexican-inspired surf theme restaurant in Southern California? Because it's the American dream. You can do anything you want in America if you set your mind to it. Okay. If you follow baseball, okay, we'll talk about our network. This is one of my really close friends, Tim Salmon, one of the most beloved Angels baseball player of all times. He currently is the broadcaster. But we're going to talk about the network, okay, because we saw, we saw a lot of theory already, and how do we use it, okay? It's what it, in school, I think it's the word they teach you now is called synergy, because you can do anything by yourself, but trust me, it's a lot easier to do it if you have a lot of people helping you. People that have all the extra strengths that you don't have, because everybody can do a lot of things, but you can't do everything by yourself. So the best way to do it, use your network. We have great friends in the music industry. You're about to see a great musician later tonight. But in Southern California, one of the bands we do a lot of work with is Social D. Homegrown punk rock, because back in the 80s and 90s, you can't do surf, skate, and snowboard videos without soundtrack. Because it's very boring to see a bunch of guys surfing for 30 minutes without a little bit of music. We also have great friends like Tom Curran, three-time world surf champion, people that I've always idolized as a kid. So one of the things that I wanted to do when I started the business was, how do I get to have fun while I work 24 seven? Because basically I've been doing this for 25 years and I wanted to hang out with people that I wanted to idolize, right? So these are some of the guys that I grew up watching. Now, in the current state, right, I got to idolize people that I grew up watching. Then the next part is, who's next? If you guys saw, there's the MTV show, The Life of Ryan. Ryan Sheckler happens to be a great customer of ours. And it's been a lot of fun building the future. Because one of the things in business is, in order to stay relevant, you have to reinvent yourself all the time. So if you see in the food category, it's always, when you see the Taco Bells, the McDonald's of the world, it's always about something newer, fresher, bigger, faster, okay? It's hard to do that because trust me, a taco and a hamburger, it's basically the same product for the same, the last 30, 40, 50 years. It's much easier to rebrand yourself and reinvent yourself using younger people. So where I had old guys, now I have young guys doing it with us. And obviously, having great partnerships with people in the news, because it is about getting some free PR. So one of the great ways to do it is use the network that you can create. Okay, obviously, we don't just have one station, we happen to have all of them. Because in your network, because I happen to be Asian, which I never realized until I looked in the mirror, that I think I'm a Brazilian, because that's where I grew up, but both of my parents are Chinese. So the idea is, I happen to belong to an Asian organization in Southern California called AAJA, which is the Asian American Journalism Association. In just about every news station in the world, at least in the United States, there's an Asian working in there. So Ted Chan works on NBC, Frank Buckley works on Channel 5. Now, these are some of the other fun people. We get obviously the most beloved, you know, skater of all times, who's now doing commentating, Tony Hawk. Part of the reason I got invited here is Kelly Smith, who's a great friend of ours. She runs the Center for Living Peace, and she's a great supporter of the Virgin Unite Foundation, which is Richard Branson, which is how we ended up on Necker Island earlier this year, which is where we met Vadas, which got us all the way over here. Then you can't just do what I call alternative sports, action sports. You gotta get yourself involved with major league sports, the NFL, football, major league baseball, NBA. So just so happens that Southern California is a, currently in the last 10 years a really hotbed for quarterbacks. They all went to a university in Southern California called USC, and we started out with Carson Palmer, then we have Matt Liner, then we got Mark Sanchez, and who's currently playing for the New York Jets, and most recently we got Matt Barkley, who is playing for, I think, somebody on the East Coast. Now, this is a great little deal too. When we talk about brands from Southern California, I'm sure you guys have 
you know, there's lots of shoe companies, but one of the oldest happens to be Vans Tennis Shoes. The guy in the little shoe there, it's actually a golf cart that it's set up so you can drive around the parking lot for promotions. That's Steve Van Doren. His family started Vans about 30, 40 years ago. And this is right after he got nominated for a Lifetime Achievement Award. It was an awesome deal, and they're currently, this summer, they'll be the title sponsor of the US Open of Surfing. So again, if I went on my own to go try to sponsor the US Open, I probably have to spend at least 50,000 of my own dollar and probably get about this much notoriety. By teaming up with Vance, who's spending millions of dollars, I'll get to do a lot more for a lot less. Because again, using the synergy and the brand partnerships. So while I'm here, Steve's team is checking out our taco truck and seeing how we're going to fit and how to use it during the US Open to promote their event. Now, you saw part of the commercial during the little slide, uh, the video presentation part. It's Ford decided that they wanted to feature local business owners in Southern California to endorse their new Ford Transit Connect. So to date, literally two years ago, a week ago, they invited me to be one of their spokesmen. And I volunteered. And at the time, which I'm still part of the Toyota race team, because you saw the other race truck that we have, and they said, how would you like to be in one of our commercials? I said, great idea. The commercial was so successful that it's still running two years later. Imagine, I'm a restaurant owner and I'm, on the f I'm basically the face for Ford in Southern California. So when you see the news during, you know, whatever part of the day, the one guy you see driving the Ford is me. They were supposed to use multiple other drivers, but they thought it's a cool brand, that what we do, it's action sports. They wanted to show a business that actually used the vehicle. If you see the commercial, you guys can Google it online, Ford Transit Connect, Wahoo's Fish Taco, and there's a 30 second version and a 60 second version. And it's been running. I thought it would run for a month or two, and they'd be done and get somebody else to do it. But they have sold, I don't even know how many cars, and they've used it in the car show in LA as well. And the last I heard, they also use the same vehicle in the Detroit Auto Show. Now, it's not just about the fun stuff. This is actually one of the things that we talked about, the, uh, Mark mentioned and somebody else also, in terms of giving back. It's Part of the culture, it's not something new to us, social you know, responsibility. It's just something that we've always done since I started in business 25 years ago. Because I played water polo in high school. And one of the things in America that's happened is sports and every other program that isn't what I call important to the school, whoever decides what's important or not, they get their budget cut. So I thought maybe I should help out the water polo program. Years later, it's turned into all the other things. So we happened to run the 5K, which is part of the Orange County Marathon. That was literally uh, a month ago. And it was the largest 5K during the event in Southern California. As you can see, that, that is us at the beginning of the race. We get to, I get to blow the little horn. It's a lot of fun. And there's a little mascot right before the race. Now, here's the best part. Out of about 10,000 people that participate plus, because there is a full marathon, a half marathon, and a 5K. The 5K is the smallest portion. It's only about 2,500 people. The rest belong to the other two major races. We're just a fun race of the day. But what happens here, you can see, is we put together the village, right? Again, using the synergy approach. We team up with all of our friends. We create the stage. We create all the fun stuff at the end of the race. So everybody to this day thinks that we sponsor the marathon. Because when you finish the race, everybody congregates in one place. It's not like there's a place for the 5K, the half marathon, and the full marathon. There's only one village at the end. Because guess what? It's on Cinco de Mayo. If you know anything about the culture, Cinco de Mayo is also known as beer drinking day in Southern California, right? And we bring in, we do the beer garden. So we got tacos, Mexican beer, and it's a great event. And again, for very little bit of money. It looks like we're the biggest sponsor of the largest marathon in Orange County. Now, you saw earlier that we do have about 1,000 team. So this is the largest off-road road race in the world. I believe Dakar is the other one. But 
I couldn't just sponsor a car. It'd be really easy for me to do that. Instead, we found a way to bring some really cool business owners together, sponsor a couple of different vehicles, and help orphanages in Mexico. So the only way you can be a part of our team is if you donate money and services and product to the orphanage in Mexico. So again, it's really easy to get a bunch of really rich guys to go raise very expensive vehicles in Mexico. But we chose to take a different approach, and the amount of PR we've gotten out of this is unbelievable. This is a photo of one of our cars. We were really, really close to winning the race. But if you don't know anything about off-road races in Mexico, they booby trap the race course. And it's really, really hard to actually win. It has very, very little to do with your skills. It has to do with your luck and a little bit of skill. Because they booby trapped the course the, the year that we were going to win because we got the shotgun, which is the first you know, place to start. And what they did is, about five miles into the race, they literally lined the course with barbed wire. Imagine, you're coming in, you're like, oh my God, we're going to win this race. And all of a sudden, your whole back tire gets, everything gets wrapped in, you know, chicken wire. Unbelievable. They spent an hour and a half on the side of the road taking the chicken wire off, and we lost the race. Now, the other passion of mine is, I had the pleasure about 20 years ago of meeting a gentleman who had started the U.S. Amateur Surf Organization, which just about every surfer in the United States is a part of. He started an organization for snowboarding. As of this winter, I got one more year to go, I've been to 19th consecutive national championships where I am the volunteer starter for Slopestyle. One of my closest friends, Bill, will be in charge of the U.S., uh, the actually, take it back, at the Moscow Olympics, he'll be in charge of snowboarding there. So the organization is grassroots. It's the largest organization in the world for snowboarding. And through the process, we get all the amateurs to become pros. One of the kids that was six years old when I met him was a kid named Sean White. At the Moscow Olympics, he'll be going for his third consecutive winter Olympic gold medal. Now, in music, okay, remember, we talked about bands. Where do we get our start? This is now going on its 13th annual Southern California. It's the Orange County Music Awards. And it's our goal to see help promote the bands, just like we have with the athletes, creating synergies. Because we don't know who the next big band is going to be. This is a place where we get all the different bands, see what kind of style music they provide, and see who is going to be next. And in the video you saw, this band right here, the Dirty Heads. They're one of the hottest new bands coming out of Southern California. They've gone on a couple of tours around the U.S. already. And we do all kinds of really fun promotions with them. We bring our partners, Vizio, Guitar Center, PBR, Monster. Not only were we funny enough, when they released their album this last summer, we actually made a new video. So we did, as you can saw in the video earlier, if you watch the Dirty Heads Spread Too Thin video, you guys can download it on YouTube. I get to fire the lead singer in the band because each band member in the video, the storyline is they do a different job. While well, the head singer was a quote unquote working in a food truck, happens to use our food truck. We did got some great branding out of it and I get to fire him at the end of the video. Oh, there we go. There's our record release party last summer. Unbelievable. Again, I can't tell you how much money we saved by partnering up with them and not having to pay the radio station. Radio station went at least $50,000 to do the party. But because of our relationship and our partnership with the band, we were able to backdoor and get the radio stations to want to be a part of our record release party. Okay, this is for all the tourists that come to Southern California. This is Angel Stadium. This is something that I did with the educational department. I got to land in a helicopter inside the stadium in front of 13,000 third graders be greeted by Mickey Mouse because they wanted somebody who represented Southern California. So who better than the mouse and myself? This is our auction right here, the largest car auction in the world for charity. And there I am driving the Ford Mustang with Tony Hawk on stage. This is the grand opening of our store in Vegas. We built a swimming pool above the ground and we have professional wakeboarders skimming across. This is the grand opening of our TSR store in Austin. We had the band with about 10,000 kids out there. 
and to end, you got to have a little bit of fun. This is my beloved wife out here, Kelly, that followed me all the way out here. And at the end of one of our really cool events, and there's Sean White, besides snowboarding, he's one of the greatest skateboarders on the planet. So that's how you do it. So thank you. I don't know, dude. I'm pretty happy to come all the way from Los Angeles to talk with somebody about social distortion in vans. <laughs> it makes me very happy. So um, I'm going to ask you the same question sure. that we asked Madi, because I think it kind of applies. And uh, the question Madi got was, do you think you would have grown as fast as you did, although you've been at it for a while, in a small market like Lithuania? It would have been tougher, because we need a lot more bodies because on average we get about 700 customers a day per store. We got about 65 stores now. So we're what I call, we charge everybody what I call, our margins are very small. So I need volume to grow. So it's, it'd be really hard to grow. Probably have maybe a couple of stores in Lithuania it would be interesting. Yeah. But no more, I don't know, I, I, you know, because there's what, about 12 million people in Lithuania? Right, I, I don't know what the, I think that might have been high. Am I, am I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I thought I Actually, saw some. this is everybody in Lithuania. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. So we need a lot of bodies, and that's the problem. <laughs> the important people. Well, I can tell you, by the way, Lake Avenue, Pasadena, yeah. that's my jam, son. Um, you want a Wahoo's fish taco. Just get one here, get one over at uh, you know, Vilnius, and you'll be set. Thank you very much, Wing. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, man. That was cool. <laughs>